Hi, I'm Rosalie Bailey. I'm a marine biologist working with Reef Evolution Foundation doing an extension coral reef restoration project at Diani Beach in Kenya. My favorite part of the job is that every day is different. You never know what you're going to see. There was one day we were doing a scouting dive, so we were checking out the area. I felt something touch my leg. It was the weirdest feeling and it was like sucking. And I looked down and there was a remora fish stuck on my leg. And they're like, they're called sucker fish. And they stick to like sharks, like whale sharks as well. And one of them was like stuck to my leg. And like luckily I was wearing leggings, so it like didn't hurt. Um, but that was, it was just one of the weirdest moments. And I just remember, I tried, I was like trying to video it, but I was like so excited in the moment. And then in the video, you can just hear me screaming <laughs> underwater. <laughs> So coral reefs are directly and indirectly really important. So a lot of coastal communities rely on them heavily for a source of food income, um, a source of job security, and also with tourism, um, like snorkeling and diving activities and water sports and hotels on the beaches, like that brings in a lot of money for the locals. Um, but like indirectly, coral reefs Although they actually take up like 0.1% of the ocean floor, but 25% of all marine life will spend some part of their life on these coral reefs. So they're really important for fish and other marine life. And the more fish there are, then the healthier that the reef will become. And it all like connects together. Naturally on the reef, you have like lots of different corals on a healthy reef anyway and through natural processes such as strong waves or sometimes even turtles will like rub their bellies on the coral and little bits will break off we've actually seen that a few times and if it's just left in the rubble like it'll get covered in sand and then it'll get smothered and it will just basically have a very low chance of surviving so what we do is we go out on a dive and we take like a big crate with us and we collect all these little bits that come off and then we use these to hang in a nursery so it's kind of like a tree design with like branches and we use fishing line with little loops and we hang these little baby corals in it and they're very slow growing but it takes usually like six to nine months and they become bigger and strong enough to be able to be out planted back onto the reef so we do that by creating artificial reefs uh, so we use bottle reefs, which is like a concrete base with glass bottles recycled sticking out of it. And then we use the top of the bottle to attach the coral to. And then over time, it like grows over the reef. Diani Beach is a stunning tourist destination. It's an incredible beach with white sandy beaches and lots of palm trees. And it's a really beautiful location to visit. But just be aware that tourism activities do have an effect on the local environment and there are some things to be careful of if you are in this area. Some tour operators will take people out on boats and they will encourage guests to pick up marine life such as urchins or sea stars to have a look and this can be really exciting and really interesting. You get an experience with nature but sometimes people can take these animals home with them and along with other marine life to use as like souvenirs so this could be damaging for the reef because if we just take all of a certain shell then that shell won't be present on the reef anymore but some activities can be really helpful and beneficial so normally diving and snorkeling is harmless for the reef just keeping distance and having a look that is completely fine there's lots of dive sites around Kenya and there's a few in particular based at the marine park. So this is like Kisitu National Park. And this area is a protected area, so there's no fishing allowed, no dangerous activities. It's very well managed. So here you can see like a thriving reef in its prime without any dangers to it. And it's a really, really nice day trip. My favourite fish at the minute, it changes a lot, but I really love parrotfish because they're so colourful and they have these little beaks like parrots and they're really good for coral reefs because they go around and they scrape off the algae. Sometimes they scrape bits of rock as well. And then they essentially put this out as white sand. <laughs> so a lot of your tropical white sand beaches are actually just parrotfish poop. <laughs>
Another reason why coral reefs are really important is because corals provide a 3D structure on the seabed. So actually corals can protect against strong wave damage as they break down the wave energy as it hits the reef. And this actually acts as coastal protection from wave damage from storms or even tsunamis. So in this day and age, I find that social media is the best way to engage with people. Because visually you get a nice picture or an image of an animal you've never seen. But then also I like to include a description or information about the animal as well. So you get a bit of education as well. So it's all about trying to make it exciting, but also educational.